We're joined now by Mark Ross. He's the founder of Caracal Global. That's a company focusing on communication and thought leader management in global politics. Um, where are we in this trade dispute? Because just last week, uh, Steve Mnuchin was picking up the phone, calling Vice Premier Leo Hu, let's get the talks going again, and now today. Yeah, I don't think we're in a good place, uh, sadly. Uh, I think we talked earlier this spring. I didn't think we'd ever get here, but here we are, and I don't really see how we're going to get out of it. I think the, really the business community should prepare for more tariffs going into 2018. I don't think we're really going to see resolution until 2019. And uh, as Sean was saying, China's vowed they're going to match this. So what do we expect? What's going to be the next salvo? Yeah, China will absolutely have to retaliate if they haven't already uh, this morning in Beijing. I'm sure they're waking up, figuring out the press release. Uh, certainly going to hit more agricultural products, going to look at where uh, Trump's constituencies can be most affected, and there'll be more tit for tat. There's no way in the short term, even if you had a chance to buy products, right, because if you could ship them across the ocean, uh, supply chains are going to be disrupted. It's a really bad situation. It's interesting. Uh, we have a special election going on in Ohio, which uh, everybody says is very, very close. It was a safe Republican district. Um, Trump says he's got the farmers on his side on this. But, but just a couple of days ago, uh, a New York Times op-ed from a soybean farmer in Ohio, he says, I'm a soybean farmer hurt by Trump's trade war. I can't take it. Um, he closed his op-ed by saying hope is not a marketing plan and hope is not a business plan. How long before... Trump himself could see kind of a, a backlash from his own supporters. This guy said he voted for him. Yeah, there's no, I think in the short term we're going to see more and more stories of small businesses being impacted by these tariffs. What's interesting about the tariffs uh, is that Trump is placing them on components, essentially parts that are shipped into the country to, to assemble bigger products. Most countries, by tradition, tax the final good, that is put a tariff on the complete product. Um, putting par taxes on components for final assembly in the U.S. is kind of backwards and isn't really seen anywhere else. And folks that are working on such a small margin, whether they be uh, agriculture, farmers, or in the steel industry, are going to be hit more time and time again. So we're going to see more and more of these stories. Trump's going to have to rally his base every, every day now and make the case that this is the right thing to do. We can endure the pain. But um, there's definitely going to be some short-term pain. But how do we get out of it is going to be the big question. I mean, like I said, I think this is going to go well into the campaign of 2018, it's clearly a campaign strategy for Team Trump. And uh, is there an off-ramp? The off-ramp, I think, is after the election. I, I mean, I wish I was more optimistic, uh, but I think in the short term, I just don't see even the avenue for the two parties to get together. Uh, Xi Jinping has his own constituencies in China that he has to deal with. He's in a really tough position. I don't see how it comes out. Even if they met, you know, it wouldn't be until November, until after the election. I really think this, the Trump team has decided that they're going to make this a campaign issue that it's time to reset the relationship between U.S. and China. Lawrence Summers, the former Treasury Secretary, had an op-ed piece about, you know, will he embrace the pain when it happens? Clearly, this is going to have an impact. Uh, and there are some saying it's not just going to be the U.S. and China. It could impact the global economy. I mean, worst case scenario, best case scenario. No, absolutely. I think this is going to uh, impede the global economy. What's really we're having a fight over global supply chains affecting multinational companies. These aren't just U.S. companies. These are Korean companies, Japanese companies, Mexican companies, Chinese companies that are sending components basically into the U.S. for final assembly. And it's a threat that the, the Trump team probably thinks they can get away with. In the 1980s, the U.S. government went to the Japanese and said, you can no longer ship cars to the U.S. We're going to slap uh, tariffs on your vehicles. And the Japanese started building plants in Ohio, of all places, actually close to where the special election is tonight. Mm -hmm. And that may be the catalyst to get the thing around. But the world is so much different than it was in the 80s. And global supply chains are far more sophisticated that I think that Trump is playing with an old playbook. Uh, and the Chinese, you know, they've got a nationalist government. Xi Jinping has got his own constituencies. Um, I don't know. It's not a great situation. And you're not too optimistic. I'm sure we'll have <laughs> you back on uh, again. This is a story that's not going away. Mark Ross, always a delight. Thanks so much.